Going to the bathroom is only number three on the list of things I don't want to be doing while driving a car. No, what's number two, JF? Uh, speaking to a police officer. Not bad. Uh, calling Ferrari if you have a 458, okay. driving with Matt Farrow. We're sitting next to you. We'll all be on the list. But number one would be... Sitting in traffic. Sitting in traffic. That's why today's topic in the Road Testament, GPS devices, hardware, software applications, successes and failures in avoiding traffic. It's a serious topic. Yeah. Actually, one of... The only serious topics we've ever done. Jeff Musial, Alex Roy, Road Testament, Traffic, today. Four years ago, Alex, you broke the cross-country record of going from New York to L.A. in 31 hours, four minutes. I didn't do it alone. I know. You did it with David Maher, and you did it with the team, myself included. True. When we were planning for that trip, we had to go through historical data to figure out when the best time was to drive cross-country. And there were two weekends a year. Yes. The weekend we went was... Mm -hmm. Columbus Day. Yes. Because that is statistically when there is the least amount of traffic on the road in the country. And And the least amount of uh, traffic police on the road in the country as well. And the other is April 1st, 2nd, 3rd. There you go. Since then, four years ago to today... There has been an onslaught of new GPS devices out there that give real-time traffic data. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about this real-time traffic data? What do you think? Uh, I think it's uh, minus a few things. I think it's all uh, a pile of crap. Yeah, mostly useless. It's unbelievable. But, you know, if you th- look back at the history of real-time traffic or traffic-enabled yeah. GPS devices, let's go back in time for a second. The Garmin devices we well, let's took... Go even, let's go further back than GPS. Let's uh, go to the, the guy in the helicopter giving traffic reports. Well, the thing is, the guy in the helicopter is still up there <laughs> and providing a lot of the data we're getting on our GPS devices. That's true. In fact, the Garmin that we took with us cross-country had XM Radio Nav traffic built in, yep. which was tied into Enrix yep. and Traffic.com, who themselves derive a lot of data from the guys who go up in the helicopter. And, and some, some sensors on the ground. Right. It, but only around major cities. And mind you, those GPS uh, units aren't getting traffic data from satellites. They're actually <laughs> getting them from FM radio signals sent to the GPS units. Which is also a really so crappy So you're not getting traffic things. if you're in the middle of the country. You're only getting traffic reports from those sensors, <laughs> 10, 15 minutes old, from those traffic reporters. If you're lucky. If you're in a major city. I think we've established that the systems are pretty much trash. However, yes. there have been rays of light. Yes. And without a doubt... The one system, which I loved, was the Dash Express system. Your your past tense. Explain why. Because it was just discontinued. Yes. The Dash Express uh, was a really interesting device. It was Dash Express made by Dash. Correct. Okay. And it came out a couple years ago for about six hundred dollars, which is three or four times higher than most devices you could buy. It's a a subscription service. Subscription based service. Okay. And it was a peer to peer. Based system. So the users would anonymously broadcast their speed and location to the Dash server, which rebroadcast that data across the entire network. At its peak, I was told they had about 10,000 users, distributed uh, among major cities, obviously. But even with a, such a small user base, the system worked. And every time, every time I was driving, the, it was accurate, like to the down to like a half a mile. Really? Now. The thing about that that I loved was because it had so much data, when I asked for directions, it would show me a list, two, three options, with traffic on the map, with ETAs extrapolated from the traffic data, I picked that was all. So you can choose between routes. That's right. Based off traffic data and construction. Now the data, we can, let's let's move on from Dash now, because they were acquired by Research in Motion, who own BlackBerry. Yeah, okay. So, which brings us to what... Is what works today. Well, hold on. <laughs> they, they were acquired. What does now, work today? Well, they were acquired by Rim, but the service no longer exists. You can right? use the devices if you own one. You might even get one for ninety nine bucks on Amazon, and it, and the traffic part will still work. But you're not gonna. It's as less people use it, you're gonna get less obviously, accurate data. Obviously. So that worked. Um, there was also, and there still is, Google Maps. Google Maps uses uh, uh, road sensor data. As well as, um, actually, if you have a phone with Google Maps on it, it will actually do the peer-to-peer thing. Well, actually, not peer-to-peer. We go peer-to-server-to-peer. So if it will take your average speed, send it to Google, and then overlay it on a, a Google Maps interface. Which, in theory, is good for several million users in the crowd. Store, exactly. Except that Apple turned off the function that's, that's on right. iPhones last year. Last August, at, at the, the, exact, same time, the same time right. that RIM... Researcher Motion, who owns BlackBerry, 
bought Dash. Right. At the exact same time, Apple discontinued Google Maps from able to, being able to transmit data back to Google. Um, funny thing about this, though, and the flaw with Google Maps, there are actually several flaws that I think you'll add to. Number one, it can only work on interstates because if you have a phone in your pocket, um, and you're walking down the street, how can the phone decipher whether you're in traffic, walking, or on a bicycle? I'm sure so they can figure that out, but go on. It can only work right now while you're on interstates because, well, you can't walk or have a bicycle on interstates or major roads. Or unless you can run 35 miles an hour, but go on. <laughs> the other flaw, which I think you'll add to... Well, the other flaw is that the entire uh, experience of using a Google Maps and traffic for as a driving you know, device... It's a completely broken chain because it doesn't do automated verbal turn-by-turn -turn instructions. Yes. In fact, you must commit a crime every time you drive a car and try to use Google Maps because you're breaking every handheld law there is. That's if correct. you're trying to use the the traffic function, it doesn't actually include Google traffic in its extrapolations of your ETA. It says... Best case, worst case. Well, you have to know something about maps and traffic and fluid dynamics to figure you also out have to know what route I should take. How to drive. Yes. How to drive without a cop seeing you use a phone yep. and do so without, without crashing, which yep. you know from American drivers is very rare. <laughs> but let's step back for a second and look at the cross-section of devices out there because the Google Maps app and Google traffic actually are are very effective. The data is good. All the data is great. Yeah. The, user interface and just general experience is, is, is a broken experience. It isn't really there. You need a co-pilot telling you what to do. You, yeah, and, and as you know, if you can find a co-pilot who can, it's pretty rare. <laughs> but let's look at what everyone else is doing on the market. Almost every device out there that you can buy, I just bought a brand new Garmin with live traffic. And that data is all derived from you know, what is called the real-time sources, which are the road sensors and helicopters. Yep. And but it's actually delayed. Right. Yep. And uh, as Inrix, which is the largest company providing traffic data to a cross-section of car manufacturers and including, GPS companies. Including Microsoft, Microsoft Direct, which gives the information to Garmin, which is going out of business. We're not going, they're shutting it off July uh, January first, two thousand twelve. But let well, yes, and but you're echoing what I'm about to say. There, are, there is really only four sources for data for traffic devices: real time data, which are the road sensors, yep. which themselves can be delayed and, and unreliable, and that includes helicopters and systems like that. Uh, well, actually, the second source are uh, radio stations and kind of civil networks yep. uh, that you know local which, government, which is regurgitated content from second sources or people calling in right. on the phone. Yeah. And the third source are um, devices. Mm -hmm. Such as your cell phone, cell phone computer. No, that's the fourth source, crowd source. Am I getting it wrong? Yeah. It is three sources. Three sources, yeah. Fine. Uh, but the most accurate source by far, the source that drove the Dash system to success was the crowdsource method, mm -hmm. which is users who actively opt in and at, at some point you know, would even contribute information to the network. And from what I can tell from using my Garmin device, my brand new off-shelf device, all these sources, none of them have yielded a brand new $400 GPS that gives me traffic data that works. In fact, it's grossly inferior to the Dash Because st it's unit. still using radio, uh, old sources of gaining data instead of peer-to-peer. -peer. Yeah, and there's no crowdsourcing functionality whatsoever. And wh but <laughs> which brings we, us to the future of G when is this going to improve? And I can tell you how it's going to improve. Well, we already see it starting to happen. We've got, um, and it's all going to rely, uh, going to be reliant around devices that already exist, phones. So Research in Motion bought Dash, which is going to probably, they're probably going to use the same technology in future Blackberries. You've got Apple, which discontinued. We never know what Apple's going to do. They're very, high, they're very secretive about what their future products will do. But they discontinued Google Maps from being allowed to transmit data back to Google. So Apple's up to something. BlackBerry's up to something. And Google, as we know, has the Android phone platform, which is actively giving data back to Google. So those three companies, they're up to something. We don't know when it's going to change, but the press releases are out there, and it shows that something's happening. I'm, yes, but... I'm going to throw out something a little crazy, and this is pretty much my final word on this. What? In order to get the user base, not merely to run, passively run, a GPS or mapping app or traffic application on their phone, okay? Because uh, if that's all they're doing, the system's never really going to improve. It might improve in terms of traffic accuracy, but one of the big problems with traffic accuracy is you want to know if it's a bottleneck or an accident. A bottleneck will clear, an accident will not clear for hours. 
for that to occur, you must have a user base that actively contributes yes. to the network of information and, and, and the database. <laughs> and for that to occur, the application must give the user something in order to compel them to, or encourage them to contribute to the content it in can, the application. It can almost be like Foursquare, which I hate. Foursquare is dead. like badges for doing more. Foursquare is dead. And I, I agree. Facebook places, Facebook places but maybe, they're, they're, they're maybe, done. maybe Facebook places, a social media location-based service could be... Let me tell you, it. there's only one application that already exists yeah. that has an enormous user base of people who actively contribute to the network of information that is already in the mapping space, and that's Trapster. Trapster is a user base of so what, six or seven million people. Uh -huh. The rate of, of growth is astronomical. They're already the number one, according to Wired, GPS application out there. It works as an overlay to Google Maps. It has Google traffic built in. It's not a GPS app, so it's not a competitor to anyone we talked about. And, and it can be used on multiple platforms. And an enormous yeah. number of people who use it, well, contribute the location of police mm -hmm. and which is but they also contribute their average speed and stuff correct. like that yeah. so it is one third to one half of the missing data set required to make a gps traffic enabled application work correctly exists and it would cost an absolute fortune for anyone in the space to build or even try to build a brand and a user base that's active in contributing the, the size that Chapter already has, they will be acquired, and what whoever acquires them will have the number one position in the sector. And cool. that's what I have to say on this topic. Maybe it's Apple. Maybe. Else? Next week in the Road Testament. Uh, Gumpert Apollo S. Um, I say base Gumpert first generation. Next week, the two are compared on the Road Testament.